So this came out of nowhere. I just woke up to react to it. You can see that on the Underdogs channel. Uh, me and Lil Z did it, and now I have stolen his recording setup with his super crisp camera so you can see every detail on my face while we talk about what this means for me, for Smash, and maybe you. So what does Sephiroth mean and uh, what are our thoughts on it? Now, obviously, if you saw that reaction, you would have seen that we didn't really pop off that much, you know? I didn't really know him, Zach didn't recognize what game he was from, neither of us have ever actually played Final Fantasy, so that might be something to do with it. I've never really had a PlayStation, I think it was a PlayStation game originally, it's on other stuff now, right? But, yeah, never had a PlayStation, didn't grow up with it, eh, don't really care. You know, Final Fantasy seems really intimidating to get into, because there's like 20 of them, or something, I don't even know, there's so many, and they all have Roman numerals, and that's confusing, right? And it always has like different versions, remasters, I don't even know. For a little tiny brain gamer like me, that ain't gonna fly, and it's really intimidating to try and get into. But I know there are a lot of fans of Final Fantasy, and I can see why you'd be really excited for it. I'm sure all the Final Fantasy fans are gonna love it, so I'm not gonna rain on everyone's parade. Not every DLC character has to be specifically targeted towards you, that's kind of not possible unless you're like a, a next level turbo nerd, which I don't even know. If you've been excited for every single DLC character, you're lucky. You're basically lucky. And I think that the Final Fantasy fans, are, they're going to get more than two music tracks from Final Fantasy and Smash now, because that's all that came with Cloud. So hopefully you get some more stuff, hopefully you get your favourites, and hopefully there's some good ones for me to put in some videos. Hell yeah. Alright, I'm excited for that. Now, that kind of leads into the next part I was going to talk about. Now, because I'm a content creator, there's more to being excited about it than just being personally excited for the character myself. I don't really have to be super hyped for the character if they just make good content, all about that content. If it's an exciting character to watch or to play, or importantly, if it makes people more excited to play Smash in general, then I am super, super happy, right? If it increases interest in the game, that's great for me. That's great for all Smash fans, right? In terms of moves, it's hard to say because it was just a short teaser trailer, really. And it is really easy to see something and be like, oh, that looked like Ganon up smash. Oh, look, he's got Arsene or whatever. That's kind of what we said. But, you know, when there's 80 characters in the game, it's very hard to be unique completely at this point. And, you know, I'm sure there is a lot of unique stuff. I liked, he had some kind of like magic field which made someone shoot themselves with an arrow. It's like it denied projectiles. That looks really cool. That's unique. And I like that. And I'm interested to see what this kind of like wings mechanic was. Like he had some badass kind of mode. That's what I said it was like Arsene. Clearly it's going to be some kind of meter or special mode or something like that. Which a lot of new characters have. They always have to have their unique mechanics. It's usually a comeback mechanic. So I'm not really a big fan of comeback mechanics normally because it feels pretty cheesy. But I do have high hopes. If it's unique, that's exciting. Unique stuff, always cool. Now the trailer was also really cool in itself. It showed him absolutely destroy Goleam. He did the like, nothing personal kid, swing, like cut him in half shit. That was pretty anime, that was pretty cool. And it showed that he was such a powerful villain that he makes this villain that like killed all the characters in Smash. He just, he one shot at him. This, this guy is stronger than all of the characters in Smash put together because Goleam just like minced them all. That's pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, I'll obviously be making a lot of content about Sephiroth when he does come out later this month. So if you aren't already subbed uh, and you actually want to see me have some fun with the character, please consider hitting sub because if you're just watching through YouTube recommended, that's cool. But if YouTube decides that I am not good anymore and stops recommending me, you're not going to see my videos. So I would really appreciate if you hit subscribe just to make sure you do see the Sephiroth content. Anyway, let's get back to the character. Now, I just really hope this gets people excited to play Smash again, but I am honestly not sure how hopeful I am in that regard, because the last DLC character was Minecraft Steve. That is the most hype reveal I've ever seen. I, I, I was never that hyped about any of the other ones. Minecraft Steve, that is crazy. That's unbelievable. That's the kind of stuff that you want to see from Smash, just the iconic gaming characters that you thought you'd never see duking it out. They made it happen. That was so exciting. But then, like two or three weeks after Steve came out, nobody was playing him. It, the hype was already dead, at least for most people I've seen. Like, I've had him on Smash Bingo running into a Steve player for two Smash Bingo episodes, and I haven't seen a single one. Nobody plays him anymore, and nobody really talks about it anymore. 
And that was like the most hype uh, character reveal I think I've ever seen. I'm not sure if it's because Smash is losing a bit of interest because it's been out for like two years. So it is natural for things to decline over time. You know, that's totally normal. But we keep getting these crazy DLC reveals, but it doesn't seem to get the community as hyped as they used to. And it also doesn't seem to get the general like internet gaming community as excited as, as they used to. You know, it used to be way more crazy, but you know, it, it might just be me. It might just be me. Let's have a look through the past with the DLC fighter reveals to try and have a think about if I'm losing interest or everyone's losing interest or maybe it's the same and I've just forgotten what the past was like. I don't know. Let, let's have a look in the past. So we had Piranha Plan. This was before the game even came out when it got revealed. Everyone was really hyped about Smash Ultimate in general, so I think Piranha Plan just kind of got bundled in with that. Nobody expected it, but it was a surprise. But a welcome one, for sure. <laughs> like, nobody expected it, but everyone was kind of happy with it. They thought it was kind of funny, recognizable character. That's cool. Uh, Joker was pretty cool as well, I think. Now, I'm not a Persona fan personally, but I can see how they implemented the art style and the character into Smash really, really well. I know a lot of Persona fans really did like it. And, you know, the character's cool, strong, but everyone thought he was bad at first, so there was clearly a learning curve to it. So I think good implementation of a DLC character, you know, that, that's cool. Now, Hero was the first weird one for me, I think, because I had no idea who he was. I'd heard of Joker. I'd heard Joker on people's top 10 lists of characters they want to see in Smash. Often it was like the top one. But Hero was different. Nobody I know asked for Hero, right? Like, I didn't recognize him. I know he's very popular in Japan with the Dragon Quest series a lot more than he would be in the West, especially for me not being a big fan of RPG-style games. But, you know, pretty weird. I was happy when he did get put in the game when they showed us what he could do because, you know, he's fun. He's stupid. I like stupid. Clearly, you've seen my, uh, you've seen me talk before, right? Now, Banjo was a really good one too, because he was really, really, really unbelievable to put in. Like, this is before Steve. This was like, I can't believe they put this guy in the game type of material because, you know, the Banjo-Kazooie series is, uh, dead <laughs> because they haven't had games in so, so long. Uh, and, but people still love the series, so they wanted to see more. I'm impressed they put it in, even if the implementation was crap and I hate playing against him. He's like top five least fun characters to play against. But you know, apart from that, he was very cool, hard to believe, and it opened up the door for other games because I think he came from my, uh, he came from Rare, which is owned by Microsoft. So like they're like, oh, we can put Master Chief in the game now or just like any Microsoft kind of IP. So I think there were two types of people when we had Terry. There were the people that knew Terry and were really, really hype and the people who had no idea who Terry was. Like there wasn't much in between space in here, right? It was either you knew him and you were super hype or you had no idea who he was and you were like, who put Rio in the game a second time? Like, I'm not a traditional fighting game fan. I know other people are. I think there's a lot of older people and a lot of people from other countries like Mexico. Not my cup of tea, but that's okay. Like I said before, not every character can be a cup of tea. Anyway, a lot of people were super excited. Now we get to a really big one. Now we get to Byleth. Now this is when I just started my own YouTube channel, so it kind of holds a special place in my heart because I remember it really well and I remember making videos for it. But Byleth was a bit of a turning point for a lot of people. Not that many people liked Byleth. Not many people knew Byleth. And there was actually the first time that I think there was a lot of public pushback against Nintendo for this reveal because nobody, nobody asked for that. <laughs> like absolutely nobody asked for that. And people weren't really happy with it after they saw it, which is the difference between that and Hero. Like, not many people ask for Hero, but when I saw Hero, I was like, yo, that's cool. I think the problem with Byleth is the oversaturation of Fire Emblem characters and also the oversaturation of sword characters, which obviously Byleth is kind of like both. Like, she has different weapons, but you know, sword character, range, all that crap. Fire Emblem character, everyone was sick of it. It was a bit of a meme after Corrin, and then they just did it again. Like, that YouTube video has loads of dislikes, people saying they don't like it. And I think it's when a lot of people started to realize that not every DLC character was going to get them personally super hyped. There are people who love that game and people who love Byleth. And, you know, power to you. I'm happy for you. But I think for the majority of people, that was not the case. Now, Min Min. Min Min's a funny one. Now, ARMS was hyped up. They were like, this is going to be this eSport. It's going to be sick. ARMS came out and then everyone just forgot about it almost instantly. 
<laughs> I don't know if like putting Min Min in Smash was meant to be to increase that interest in arms again. I don't think it worked <laughs> because Min Min did the exact same thing as the arms game did. Hyped until they came out, came out, everyone forgot about it. It was like, it's this beautiful but sad truth, right? <laughs> oh god. It, and Min Min's not very fun to play against, we all know that. Uh, Steve already talked about it. Honestly, unbelievable addition. Love him as a character. Uh, he's so true to the games. It's actually insane how much Minecraft content they packed into one character. But I do just wish that hype stuck around for just a little bit longer. It was really hype and I was legitimately shocked. Like, I, I put my Twitter reaction clip of this. I could not believe it. Really? <laughs> what the fuck? And that's the first time I was like that. But like I said, the hype didn't stick around for very long and that was a nuts one. I'm beginning to think that maybe we're getting a bit spoiled with these character reveals coming out one after the other. Like, C was in, I think, mid-October he came out. Now, this is going to be probably mid-December when Sephiroth comes out. It's only two months apart, but, like, Steve's fully forgotten about. It almost feels like it is time for a new reveal, even though it's only been two short months. Now, obviously, it's in my best interest for Smash to stay relevant because, uh... It is my, you know, full-time job to make stuff for Smash. But I also do love the game, and YouTube content aside, I, I love making Smash stuff, I love playing Smash, and I want it to stay relevant and popular for as long as possible. And I don't want you guys to see me saying this as me saying that the game is dying or anything, because I hate that stuff, right? People are like, oh, it's dying when, like, a couple people less play it. Just, that, that annoys me a lot. And I, I do understand that it's natural for some people to lose interest in stuff over time. Other people also pick up interest in stuff over time when their favorite character gets added to Smash, so I hope there are some people like that watching the video right now. I want to know what you guys think about this. Are you excited? Did you not really know who Sephiroth was like me and Zack? And how is your interest in Smash in general going? Do you feel like you are more interested than you were maybe a year ago? Like, have you got into it more? Or have you kind of like paid it off and just uh, may maybe you're less excited about things now? Let me know. I'm honestly excited to, uh, to hear from you guys in the comments this time. Yeah, like I said, don't take this as me being negative about the reveal. I'm excited. I love the breath of, I love the breath of fresh air that a new character brings. It's, it's honestly fantastic and I love having new characters in the game. And this one does look very cool. But I just want to start a conversation about where you think the fighter pass is going and how it makes you feel personally. Are you more excited? Less excited? Whatever. Let me know. I'll be reading pretty much all the comments as I do on almost all my videos. So, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.